Hey everybody, this first tutorial is just to review the things that were on the quiz today in case you want to take a look at them again. The first thing we did was create a new blank project, which I've done here. And the second thing was to import images, so I'm going to double click into my initial scene. In my library, I'll click on the images tab, and I'll use the plus button to bring up a dialog window where I can choose a background image, and I can choose my character's images. I'll choose the anglerfish, I'll click on the first image of the anglerfish, and shift click on the last image to open all of them, and I'll hit my plus one more time to bring in the pufferfish. Click on the first image, shift click on the last image, and open. I'm going to create actors for my background, both fish, and my wall, floor, and ceiling. I'll give them images. My background gets the background image. I'll drag one of the fish animation images to each of my fish just as a placeholder. I'll bring in the animated images later. For my wall, I'll double click it so I can see its attributes and I'll click on the color attribute to change it. I'll make my walls green, my floor blue, and my ceiling red. Taking each of these onto the stage, I'll bring in my background, click it to resize it, bring in both of my fish, and I'll bring in my walls. My floor. The ceiling, because it's going to have a bounce uh, behavior, I'm going to turn off its physics movable attribute. Movable is a Boolean attribute. I'm going to set it to zero, meaning the ceiling is not movable. Uh, also, uh, you may have noticed the disturbing rotation when the fish collide. That can be avoided by, in each fish, enabling fixed rotation, meaning the rotation will not move, the rotation is fixed. That way the fish won't rotate when they bounce off each other and bounce off the ceiling. I'll do that for both fish. It's under physics, enable fixed rotation. The next thing we want to do is animate our fish. So we'll double click the fish give it the animate behavior, and then from the images tab, select all of the images by clicking the first, shift clicking the last, dragging them into the animate behavior, and saying yes, this is a sequence of images. Do the same thing for our other fish. Double click, add an animate behavior, switch over to images, Click the first image, shift click the last image, drag in. Yes, this is a sequence of images, and we have two animated fish floating against our background. Ooh, a little bit of my green wall is sticking out there on the right side. I can adjust that just by dragging that wall to the right a bit. The next step is to use acceleration to create buoyancy in the fish. So I'm going to give the fish 
and accelerate behavior. I'm going to have the fish accelerate in the direction 90 degrees, which is upwards. And I'm going to make the acceleration small. I'll make it 10 so that the fish slowly floats upwards. Now, since I want the other fish to have the same behavior, I'm going to click it, copy it by hitting Command-C, move over to my other fish, and Command-V to paste the same behavior. Now both fish should have buoyancy and float towards the top. The next behavior is that I want the fish to bounce when they collide against the ceiling and each other. So I take a collide behavior and say bounce when colliding with the ceiling. And I'll take another collide behavior and say bounce when colliding with fish one because this is fish two. I'll take both of these by clicking the first, shift clicking the second, command C to copy them, go into my other fish and paste them both. And this is fish one, so I want it to bounce when colliding with fish two. And now I should have bouncing off the top. Not much of a bounce, probably because they don't have much upward acceleration. If I were to increase this acceleration, there'd be more bounce. My next thing is to give uh, one of the fish movement. So I'm going to, might as well give this fish movement. I'm going to collapse these behaviors down to give myself a little bit more space. To give myself even more space, I can take my two collide behaviors, click the first, shift, click the second, and turn them into a group. I can call that group collide. And I will add rules for the key controls. So I'll create rule key J to move left. And you can use uh, an accelerate or you can use move here. Uh, I'm going to use accelerate because it's more of an underwater or space quality of motion. Um, and uh, when you're accelerating, after you release the key, uh, the fish will keep moving. Whereas uh, with move, when you release the key, the fish or whatever you're controlling will stop. Um, so I'm using the J key to move left. Left is 180 degrees. I'll take this rule, copy it, paste it. I'm using the K key to move down. Down is 270 degrees. I'm going to name this rule J so I know which one it is. I'll name this one rule K. And I do that by double clicking the name. I can take this rule, Command C to copy, Command V to paste, double click to change the name, call it rule L. And this uses the L key to accelerate to the right or zero degrees. So now I should have movement with my three keys for this fish downwards, to the right, to the left. Very nice. The next thing I want to do is use the change attribute behavior to cause the fish to face in the right direction. So while the fish is moving to the left, I want the fish to face to the left. So inside this rule, when I hit the J key, not only will the fish accelerate to the left, but the fish will also change its attribute. Which attribute will it change? It will change the fish one graphics flip horizontally. And it will change it to one. Since it's a boolean, the one means yes or true. We do want it to flip horizontally. And when we hit the L key and the fish moves to the right, we want to unflip it because the graphic naturally faces to the right. So we want an unflipped graphic facing to the right. So again, that's uh, we can just take our change attribute here, Command C copy, go down to Rule L, Command V paste, and take the same attribute and change it to zero. And now we should have a fish that 
faces to the right when it moves to the right and faces to the left when it moves to the left. Very nice, obedient fish. We're going to use the overlap or collide rule to stop the character's horizontal motion when it hits a wall. So we're going to create a new rule and we'll say when this fish overlaps or collides with a wall, we're going to change its attribute fish1 motion linear velocity x. That's its horizontal rate of motion and we're going to change it to zero. So let's see if that works. When our fish collides with the wall, the linear horizontal velocity should be reduced to zero, and it is. The fish stops. So this rule works. We'll call it the wall rule. Click it, command C to copy, and put it in the other fish. Command V to paste. And as we talked about in class, this is not a perfect way to stop the fish. There are ways to push them past the rule, even with this rule in place. But we'll look at how to do that at a later time. Uh, also in the quiz today was, uh, and the final thing uh, that was on the quiz before the bonus question, was the... Uh, vertical velocity stopping when the fish hits the floor. So it's actually quite similar to the wall rule. So we can copy the wall rule, paste it using command V, and turn it into the floor rule. When the actor collides with the floor, we change its motion linear velocity Y or its vertical speed, its vertical velocity, to zero. Copy that rule using Command C. Place it into the other fish, Command V, and we should have both fish stopping their motion when they hit the floor, hit the wall, or bouncing when they hit the ceiling. And if they have enough velocity, the bounce will be more extreme. The bonus question was to change the character's colors when they collide with each other. So let's take a look at that. We'll make yet another rule. The rule will be an overlap or collide rule. This is fish 1, so we'll say when fish 1 collides with fish 2, we'll change its attribute. The attribute we change will be fish 1 color, and then we can independently change the red, green, blue, and alpha, where alpha is transparency. So this fish has a lot of green and blue in it. So let's say when the fish collide, we're going to remove all the green color. We'll set self.color.green to 0 when it collides with the other fish. And similarly, we can take this rule, copy it, move into the other fish, paste it using Command V. And in this fish, since this fish is pretty orange, we can say fish2 color red and set that to zero. And that'll take all the red out of the fish when they collide. It didn't work. Let's see why it didn't work. Because I didn't change which fish. This is fish 2. So it needs to collide with fish 1. So when it collides with fish 1, all the red will be removed from it. And indeed it is. Great. So that was everything that was on the first quiz. Um, and in the next tutorial, we'll move on to the new material that we covered today.